So while I really like this car, there are a couple of things about it that still bother me just a little bit. And one has to do with the phone and the phone connection. I'd like to talk to you about that. Okay, so here's a kind of a silly problem that we have with the uh, Tesla. If I get a phone call when I'm outside the car, it's like this. Oh, Darth Vader's calling me. I should answer it. And I hear the, the uh, Imperial March. So that's great. And that's very helpful. Now, on the other hand, if I get a text from Darth Vader, I'll also get a message like this. So you can hear the uh, text sound that I have set up for it. And that's terrific. The problem is, when you're inside the car, it's a little different. And see what we got going on here. I have the phone already set up down there. Um, now what I want to do is I want to get a call. So Darth Vader is going to call me here a second. So if you just call me, we can hear that come through. So I see it come up on there. Darth Vader is calling me, and I can see Darth Vader is calling me there. And uh, it's kind of cool, and it's, I can still hear the noise. The problem is, when you're driving, that gets drowned out by the road noise and you don't actually hear it. You hear it on there, so, but you can't. You won't necessarily hear it there too um, as you're driving. Now let's see if I get a text message, what happens. I can look down and see what the text says. Flash on, and then up here, I saw nothing. There was no sound, there was no indicator, there was no anything that told me that I was getting a text, which is the really weird part about this. And I understand for safety reasons, you don't want to be distracted by a text, I get that, but it's kind of a weird thing when you deal with it because you don't, you have to kind of understand that that's happening. Now I do have the ability to say, hey Siri, read last text. I found your most recent message from Darth Vader. Join me. Together we can rule the galaxy. Would you like to reply? Yes. What do you want to say? I'll never join you, exclamation point. Your message says I'll never join you. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. So there is a way around it. You can talk around the whole system and be able to uh, still text if you want to while you're driving in a way. And I understand the safety feature, but it's kind of an annoyance that you can't actually uh, do anything with texting. You know, so you don't actually have any indicator that someone's texting you. Again, safety reasons, I get it, but it'd be nice if it just gave you an alert, said there's a text or something. Because it, even it, it doesn't even make a sound on the phone, which is the weirder part about all that. So anyway, that's one of the things that I kind of don't like about it. Now let's talk about something I do like. I want to talk about something I really do like, and that's some of the numbers that are included in here as you're looking at how the car's efficiency is. So they give you some real-time real, real -time information in here. There's actually two places to find information. One is in your energy usage. It'll tell you how you're doing energy-wise. So you can see what your consumption looks like. So over time, and this is for the last over the last 30 miles, I can change the range to go in there and I can look at what it's going uh, right now, what it's doing right now, but I can actually see what my watt hours per mile are. What are watt hours per mile? Let's break that down for a second. So what is a watt hour per mile? It's defined as how many watt hours of energy a car consumes to travel one mile. If we think about 1000 watt hours per mile being equivalent to one kilowatt hour per mile, it makes it easier. Our battery is 60 kilowatt hours in, in size, and we can travel a maximum of 215 miles on that battery. So if we do the math, we can figure out that under ideal conditions, dividing 60 kilowatt hours by 215 miles equals 0.279 kilowatt hours per mile or 279 watt hours per mile. All right, so I can see how I've, uh, I'm averaging about 183 watt hours per mile, which is a pretty good number. Overall, uh, what you want to see is your numbers stay below 290. If you can keep it below 290, you're doing really well with your car. So uh, over the last little while, over the last 30 miles, here's how it's looked. And um, I'm projected to have 143 miles left on this battery charge, which is kind of funny because the range it tells me based on the actual um, charge is 118 miles. So it's funny how it looks at it and it says there's a calculation that it does to figure out based on your usage what it looks like, but it's a little different than what it looks like when you're uh, looking at the uh, effective range based on your energy usage. So this is the battery monitor, much like you have in your phone. This is an actual projection based on how you're driving. Now there's a little more detail that's available behind here, and that's actually to see what's happening with my charge in the last uh, little while. It's, there's a couple of different uh, modes here. First one is, you know, for the last 
12 minutes since the last time I started the car. I've gone 3.2 miles and I'm averaging 185 watt hours per mile, which is pretty impressive for that short distance. But I can also see what it's been since the last charge. Since the last charge, I've driven 61 miles. I've averaged about 204 watt hours per mile and I've used 12 kilowatt hours of battery. Remember that the battery is a 60 kilowatt hour battery, so it gives you a sense of how much I've used. So I've used uh, about a fifth of the battery that way, right? So like a traditional engine, I can actually keep track of all the different information. I can have different trip counters. So we have a couple of trip counters on here. Trip A I use for various things, but it's really trip B I want to focus on. This is my lifetime of using the car. I've traveled 2,373 miles in the car so far, and I've used 584 kilowatt hours of the battery. That's about 10 charges, nine since I got it, since it came fully charged. And in that time, I've traveled the amount of 246 watt hours per mile. Given the fact that we thought it should be 279 or 290 given the loss, 246 is a pretty darn good number and it means that I'm using my car very efficiently.